Hello, hello. Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be talking about our new purchase, a 2018 Land Rover Discovery and why this might be the best or worst thing I've done so far with my girlfriend Claudia. So she's been looking for a new car and you know, we're looking at pretty cheap cars like, I don't know, $10,000 Toyota RAV4s and, and things like that. And then I was just browsing the internet and saw that this was available uh, here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And so I was like, ah, let's just go check it out for fun. Um, I've heard only bad things about used Land Rovers. So it was kind of like, oh, you know, we're probably not going to get this, but it'll be fun just to see what it's like. And so we went there. It was at a dealership. I don't typically like to get used cars from dealerships, but we're like, whatever, we're not going to buy it. So it's just going to be for fun. So we go check it out. And it was really cool. Uh, so it has like cooled heated seats, dual sunroofs. Uh, it's got the supercharged V6. It's an HSE uh, model, so it's a top trim for that year. It's got like Apple CarPlay. Uh, it's still wired, not wireless. It's a 2018. Um, obviously, four wheel drive. It's got locking diffs as well. It's got all around air suspension. So it's a pretty capable machine. Um, one feature that I really liked is like when you get out, you know, lower and when you and you put it in drive, it'll raise back up again. So pretty cool stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of how we even thought about getting it. Uh, but kind of on to the point of like, well, you know, you usually should not buy a used Land Rover. Why? Well, they are pretty unreliable. And you know, this one I was pretty worried about because I've heard not good things, especially about the new Discovery. It is, of course, the newest generation of Discovery. There has been a facelift since then, but I was like, I don't know, I don't know. Um, so I checked it out. It seemed okay. I had a lot of miles, over 100,000 miles. So that's how it was even relatively within our price point. So that's why even this was within the realm. I mean, we would have preferred to look at forerunners and things like that, which were you know, more reliable and within the price range a little bit, but just being here in Utah, there's not really a lot of those available, especially going into summer. You know, they're getting snapped up pretty quickly. We looked at a 2007 Highlander with almost 180,000 miles. It was significantly cheaper. It was, it was less, more than half of the price of this car. So, you know, uh, that one got snapped up minutes before we could get it. So, okay, we came off that loss. Let's try, <laughs> try this. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the exterior. Uh, I'll go over a little bit of the details, the features, the quirks, and then go to the interior and kind of give you my thoughts at the end. All right, so here you can see the exterior of the vehicle. It's got a great, great paint that's metallic in color. And you can also see the kink in the roof above the third row to give it kind of more headroom for the third row passengers. All of the accents are black. You can see the Discovery is black in the grill as well as the roof and the mirrors because it's got the dynamic package. It looks great in this color. I think this car definitely needs to be in a darker color. I've seen it in like red and blues, but this is definitely the best color combination. You can see the rear with the one piece tailgate and kind of the kink where the license plate goes. I think it doesn't look too bad, but some people might, you know, differ in their opinion. And you can see the split tailgate kind of thing that I'm gonna talk about next. So something that I showed in the exterior shots was that it has a split tailgate, kind of. Um, they wanted to harken back to the you know, previous discoveries, which had that weird split tailgate that kind of had the cut in it. So you'll see like the license plate areas off to the side. And, and some people really don't like that feature or I guess design. Um, but with that being said, it is still one big tailgate and on lower trims, you actually don't get that section that folds down after you open it. So they kind of, they kind of tried to do 
a half-assed <laughs> version of a split tailgate where you still have a normal tailgate, uh, one piece, and the window does not open in the back, unfortunately, uh, like a GX of you know, a comparable year would open. Um, but they just added this flap on the inside that mechanically will open. Um, so, you know, that's kind of how they, how they did that. The cool thing, as you also saw, was the three rows, which the last two are all electrically moving. Uh, very cool. And something that I also showed was the heat and cool seats in the rear. That's an interesting thing. I didn't notice though, like after driving it for some time, it's been about a month. And when you turn on the air con in the front, it'll also turn on all the air conditioning in the back. So I'll have to like reach back and like turn it off. Um, I know I can do that in the screen, but it's just easier. Um, so that's another thing is like, just the, the technology is not 100%. Um, there's some times where there's hiccups, but honestly not as bad as people make it out to be on the internet. Maybe this is, you know, knock on wood, a good one. Uh, but yeah, as far as, you know, design and everything, which I've already touched upon in the, uh, in the overview of the outside, the exterior, I do like it. It's cool, full LED lights. Um, it's also got fog lights on it too, so front and rear, which, you know, you don't see a lot of rear fog lights in the US nowadays. Um, yeah, it's also got lights in the mirrors. When you unlock it at night, you'll see a little circle with uh, the logo of the Discovery, which is pretty cool. And yeah, it doesn't have like running boards or anything that are electrical like a lot of other cars, but I guess they kind of make up for it by it lowering when you when you put it in uh, in park. But I've actually turned that feature off because I don't want to put extra strain on the air suspension since it is kind of older and to change that is going to be very expensive. Um, another thing I notice is like this model does have full skid plates on the bottom, which is really cool to see. Uh, so if you do actually end up taking it off road, which I think the previous owner did because I did find like leaves and stuff like in interesting spots. Um, but yeah, it's got skid plates all along the bottom, which is great. Um, you can get it pretty high up as well. So when you put in the highest setting, it's got all the off road settings, uh, which are show in the interior uh, shots, but it's got around like four or five off road settings. Um, you can lock the diffs. Uh, it's very cool. It's got hill descent control. So lots of interesting features in the screen. It's also got settings for showing you your, your depth if you're in water. Um, it'll show the angles of the, of the wheels and the vehicle itself. Uh, so very comprehensive on the off-road side of things. Uh, definitely can go. Now, will you go to the trail and actually return? That's another question. That's probably why you buy a Land Cruiser or you know, a comparable Lexus GX or LX. So, you know, there's that as well. But it's very luxurious. Definitely the nicest car we have. I actually like it more than the Tesla when it comes to like the luxury aspects because the Tesla does not have cooled seats and I love cooled seats. I was telling her like the biggest thing for me is like the next car has to have cooled seats. It gets so hot in the summer here in Salt Lake, like a hundred degrees sometimes and you know that's a whole different debate of like global warming and stuff but like it gets hot and it's a black almost black car. It's got a black roof so it's got the I think like Sephithian gray something color but it's got the dynamic package which blacks out the roof, the grill, um, and all the other trim around the car. So it's gonna get really hot in that car. Um, so it's good to have cooled seats, you know, dual climate control for the front and then also, you know, a separate zone in the back. And yeah, cooled seats in the back seats as well, which is really nice. Uh, that second sunroof, by the way, which you'll see in the video, is kind of positioned more for the third row seats. So kind of cool that they're part of the experience as well. They don't get the cooled and heated seats, but I mean, it's still a, a good spot to sit. I do fit very comfortably in the third row. I'm 5'9", and I've got like that much space for my knees and like that much for my head. So very spacious. They tried to mimic the stage seating where each row is kind of higher than, than the one previous, like they did in the previous models of the Discovery, the LR2, LR3, which you would see in America. They weren't labeled as Discovery, I think, so yeah, LR4, LR3, LR2. And then on the roof, going back to kind of the exterior styling, it's got the kink in the roof, which you don't notice as much with the roof rails on it. 
um, but it does it does still have that so very cool and then you know the the rear trunk is a very square opening it's huge it can definitely fit a lot and I've already put you know cabinets and things in there so it, it's very usable I've even used a feature where you can lower the rear of the car to load heavy things and I always thought that was kind of like a dumb feature I'm like oh you know like getting a few more inches like eh, what's the point of that but it actually does help when you have something really heavy so there's that as well um, I did notice that like when you have that little flap that comes down th to mimic the you know the split tailgate um, to reach things it's kind of difficult it's long of course which is great um, but you know it, it does cut into it much like a split tailgate would so you know it's a, it's a plus and minus but it is nice to have that to sit and like you know look at the sunset or something it's, it's nice it's really nice um, as far as other design aspects it does have uh, you know washers for like the rear camera and for the, for the front headlights and um, the front grill actually does close and open so for better aer aerodynamics which was something I didn't know it had uh, until we were washing the car and I I found out that it did so usually I, I try to know what features the car has before purchasing it but yeah it does have automatic uh, stopping so uh, collision avoidance system so when I, the car in front of you breaks really hard this car will break really hard and unfortunately I've had to uh, use that feature and it works very well <laughs> but like being you know such a big heavy car and it's an off-roader it definitely pitches a lot <laughs> when you're under hard braking um, yeah I tried using radar cruise control and you know, seeing that it has the collision avoidance system, I thought it would have radar cruise, but I've read online that it, it did and didn't, so I don't see it on the steering wheel. Like, it doesn't have, you know, how to set the distance and stuff, so I assume it does not have that feature, which a little bit unfortunate, but, you know, it is what it is. It's very comfortable. It doesn't have a bunch of drive modes for when you're doing normal driving that's not off-road. Uh, it's just comfort, and that's it, which, you yeah, know, it makes sense. That's all you really want to use, but, yeah, let's go to the interior. All right, so here we're gonna get into the driver's seat and kind of see what it is to be like in a Land Rover Discovery from 2018. I love the seats with the white piping. It looks awesome. I'm not a big fan of the piano black everywhere, but it still looks great with leather on the dash and on the glove box. You can see the first sunroof open here, second row headrest down, and that second sunroof. Here we'll turn on the car. You'll see that this one has the option for the digital dash and the large center infotainment screen, which has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It also has the cooled seats, the heated seats, and the dial for putting it in park and drive. You can push this dial to activate the off-road modes. You've got about four of them here, and then also you can put it in low range, as it does have a transfer case, and locking differentials. And you can see here the center lock differential and also the center screen, I guess, <laughs> for the dash and how that functions. You can have multiple dials and change it. It's very customizable. Uh, you also have here the controls for the air suspension, putting it up and down. And as we come to the back seats, you can see these would be the dials for changing the temperatures and for turning on and off your heated and cooled seats. Now we'll move to the rear compartment. As you saw, the split tailgate, and this is where the third row comes into play. So on the left side, there are buttons where you can raise and lower all three rows. And so here electrically, I'm raising the third row. It's one touch, which is nice, and it does it relatively quickly. So, you know, you're not in any kind of rush to uh, get things in. Tons of space. The second row is actually all the way pushed back in this image. So even with them all the way back, you have a ton of space and then you can just put them all down from here. Something really cool is you can actually put up and down all the seats and the headrest from the center infotainment. And with them down, of course, you have tons of luggage space. You don't have a button to lock the car when you hit the tailgate, but it so, is where it is. To wrap up this first impressions, thoughts on the new Land Rover Discovery, kind of new to us, you know. So look, I mean, You've probably seen, if you're watching this video, you've heard of Doug DeMuro. He used to have a used Land Rover Range Rover, um, and it was notoriously really bad uh, for reliability. Uh, he had a 
you know, a warranty from CarMax and ended up using like $20,000 worth of repairs on that. So one of them being the air suspension, which I'm really paranoid about. But anyway, so it's not a, a reliable car. And I'm very aware of that. You know, I've had only Toyotas and the Tesla um, or Japanese cars actually, because we have a Subaru Outback as well. And like, so going from, from those to a European English car, uh, which is very notorious for you know, horrible reliabilities. It's, it's, it's a big change, but you know, I have this rule and I tell Claudia this all the time, like no boring cars, like no boring cars ever. Um, so, you know, you could have gone for something reasonable like a Corolla or a RAV4, or you could go for a Land Rover Discovery. So, you know, why not? Um, it's worth a shot. And so, so far, you know, I, I feel good about this car. It, it, it does seem to be okay, knock on wood again. When we were purchasing it, I made sure to find a third party, independent third party, to go inspect the car. They did a full report on it. So that was really cool. Um, I didn't know the service existed here in Salt Lake. So they, what they do is they actually go to wherever the car is at a dealership or a private party. They'll go test drive it, check it out. They'll make sure to look at like historical problems with it, make sure it's done all its recalls, all these kinds of things. Um, they'll give you a car fax for free, but I already had one from the dealership, so not a big deal, but a great service. So definitely something I would I would do um, if you are not comfortable with you know checking out your own cars or if you just need like an extra opinion. I wanted to have a, a second opinion. I felt really good about it already, but it just gave that extra peace of mind uh, before I actually, you know, signing the documents and everything. So that was a huge part of it. So definitely when it comes to a car like this, get multiple opinions on it, have it checked out because there's some things that you might not catch. Um, one thing that, that was like super weird, it doesn't have a dipstick. I, I, this might be something that I look really dumb not knowing, but like apparently a lot of newer luxury cars don't have a dipstick for the oil. So you can't just like, you know, check the quality of the oil or, or check the levels and you just have to rely on the computer. So I think what we're going to do is I'm just going to change the oil myself. Um, I was checking out um, some stuff in the suspension. I lifted it up in my garage. And so I noticed that, you know, it's pretty easy. So that'll probably be something to do, but yeah, I think it's a beautiful car. It's, it's wonderful. Um, it's really comfy. I hope we can take it on a road trip this summer, but overall thoughts after a month of driving it, we put like a thousand miles on it already. So we've definitely been using it and it's great. It's, it's really nice. There's a couple little things, little rattles, but you know, it comes with it. It's got over a hundred thousand miles so you know we know it's it's not perfect it's got a, a couple of scratches but it's awesome for us and I think you know I'll keep you posted if anything bad happens but it's a good car if you, with any vehicle if you find a good one and it's been taken care of it has all the car facts or at least it, you have all the service records and everything then you know it's it's worth a shot uh, it's 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 better to have interesting cars than not so that's my take and yeah i think land rover discovery really cool car be careful because there's a lot of bad ones i read a lot of the forums and it, it can go wrong pretty quick so just be careful but this one this specific one that we purchased it's pretty cool so that's my take have a good one I'll catch you in the next one mm -hmm.